code it in um, with the with cell references and, and formulas in uh, in Excel to uh, create uh, forecasting by using the holds uh, method. I will go through one more example, which uh, on on this um, this type of forecasting when you have um, uh, a trend in the data uh, and. Uh, this is uh, also explained in the textbook. It's problem 230 on page 78, which uses the data from another problem, uh, which we might remember as the number of, uh, of visitors in, uh, in a park. And uh, we tried last week to solve this problem by, creating a, uh, by using regression and creating a regression line. And then we had uh, a situation in which looked like this, that we had some data points for the six first uh, month in a year, which looks uh, looked like this, that we had uh, rather uh, small numbers in, uh, in the first uh, month, in the winter months, January, February and so on, and then uh, it was uh, uh, increasing considerably in uh, the month May and, uh, and June. And we found uh, regression line which was best fitted for this problem which uh, looked more like uh, this at least it uh, let's assume it ended uh, at, the, at this line and we found that uh, the formula for the regression line was uh, the demand for a certain uh, period was minus 807.4. So the end point uh, or the interception with the y-axis was at this number, eight minus 807.4. Uh, and the gradient, the B value was 500.54. multiplied by the t value then we should be able to find the value for any t uh, any any period t uh, for the, the value for this regression line and then we could just continue that one if we expected this increase to continue in uh, the coming uh, month so here in this problem we will try to continue from this value um, and remember to use this uh, double exponential smoothing method called the Holt method. We needed the values, the S values, an initial value for S. Let's call that S0. And we also needed an initial value for G. And the uh, G was the gradient, the increase from one period to another. And we needed that G value. And then, of course, when we have this found this line by using regression, the gradient will be the same as the B value in this formula. <coughs> so the S0 value can be found by adding the, uh, well, by um, using this formula and uh, using the T value of six, which is the end point for June, for June is month number six. So we will find in this case, that the S0 value by uh, exchanging T by 6, that the S0 value will be uh, 2,195.84. And the G value for period uh, 0 will be the same as the uh, the, the B value in the regression formula, 500.54. Uh, we can have a column for the B value because we should now adjust these values when new data comes. And of course, the T value here will start at zero in June. And then July will be one and August will be two and, and so on. Uh, we are also given in this problem that the alpha value should be 0 0.15 and the 
beta value should be 0 0.10. So these values are given. And as mentioned, this, uh, the value of the smoothing constant is not given. This is something my, uh, you, well, in, in real world, you will find them by studying and analyzing previous data and find out which, uh, which value is actually the one which is best uh, working best for your particular product in, in your market. So, let's now uh, assume that we have these initial values, which is formed by using regression analysis on this uh, trend line. The S0 value is the value, the current value at the, the last uh, measured uh, data point for the trend line. Uh, and the G value will then be the the slope or the increase from one period to, to another for this, this line. Same as the B uh, constant in, in the formula. And now we can assume that in, uh, uh, in July we get a uh, um, new value, the first D value for the month of July, which is 2150. We need to update the series. Um, of course, we, we can find the, the forecast for period number uh, one will be to add the series and the gradient together, which will give us a value of 2,696. Point 0.38 to be exact. <coughs> Uh, and then we get a new value in July 2150. We have to update the series. S1 will now be 0 0.15, which is the alpha value multiplied by the new demand of 2150, plus 1 minus alpha, which now will be 0 0.85 multiplied by the previous forecast as the sum of the series and the gradient, which is 2696.38. And this will now give us a new value of the series of 2614.42. which is actually less than the forecast because the demand here was only 2,150, which meant that the gradient or the increase will not uh, continue with the same growth until the new period. So the actual value was here, which is below the trend line, which means that we need to adjust it to meet to a certain degree the new measured value. And then the important is of course importance is decided by the, the smoothing constant. Uh, similar we can find the value, new value of the gradient in period number one, which will be the beta value, 0 0.1, multiplied by the difference between the two previous series values, 26.14 minus 21.95 and then plus 1 minus beta which is 0 0.9 <coughs> multiplied by the previous value of the gradient which was 500.54 and calculating this we will find that the new value of the gradient will be 492.34 <coughs> which also means that the gradient, the growth, will not continue in the same way, but it, it has to be reduced in this forecasting value. <coughs> because of the measured value was lower than the expected value, uh, which, which was calculating uh, and, and formed by, by this forecasting method. And then we can 
just continue and say that the new demand in August will turn out to be 2,660. Which is not very far from the forecast actually, so here is the trend line or, or, or this uh, forecasting method um, was uh, quite good. Uh, we can again update the series and now the new value of the series, the S2, will be 0 0.15 multiplied by the new value of the demand, 2660, plus 1 minus alpha multiplied by the previous forecast. Of course, we need to find the previous forecast by adding these two together, the series and, and the gradient, which was 310676. Uh, so here, the new value of the series will be the smoothing <coughs> constant multiplied by the new demand plus 1 minus the smoothing <coughs> constant multiplied by the previous forecast. And the updated value will now be 3039.75. And we can do the same <coughs> for the gradient. Use the values here in the formula. Gradient uses the beta smoothing constant, which is 0 0.1. Difference between the two previous series values. And plus 1 minus beta <coughs> multiplied by the previous value of the gradient will now give us a new value of 485.64. which will make a new forecast for the next month, which is the sum of the series and the gradient here. Actually, 3,525.39 to be exact. So this is the way to continue. Then we will get a new data in September, which is now month number three. And we have to update the series and the gradient according to the new data by using these formulas. Um, also, we are asked in this uh, problem to find a forecast for November, no, for, for October, so, sorry, when you are at the end of September, and that means that tau is equal to 2. We are in the end of August, we are creating a forecast for September, which is this value. And if we also should create a forecast for October, the next month, we have to add the gradient once again. So S, the forecast will be for October, will then be for T plus two, will then be the series value of t plus two times the series, uh, the gradient value of t. So we assume that the line will continue with the same growth two periods into the future. But of course, this is a problem about, well, trying to estimate the visitors of a park. And uh, this is probably a situation where you have seasonal differences. You have lots more visitors in the summer month than in the future. So that's why this method probably is not the best method to try to estimate, uh, the, uh, to make a forecast in this particular problem. But anyway, it's a good example to show how the uh, new values will update the values of the series and point of the line and the gradient, the growth or the, uh, the the slope of, of the line. And here we are also asked to find the forecast for December at the end of July. That means we are forecasting five periods into the future and at the end of July, it is actually at this point. So we assume that we have the values here, the series values at the end of July, the gradient value at the end of July and will continue for five periods. So that means that uh, f of t plus 5 in this case, forecasting December in July, five months in, into the future, will of course be 
as t plus e5 multiplied by the gradient. OK, now we have seen methods for stationary series. We have seen uh, two methods for, uh, uh, for trend-based ba uh, series, uh, like the regression we saw last week, and uh, now the double exponential smoothing method called Holt's uh, method. But as we have talked about in this particular case with visitors to a park, it will probably be seasonal differences. And this is quite common. Uh, you have lots of, uh, uh, of products that are, will have seasonal uh, uh, differences. Of course, uh, ski equipment will sell better in the winter, in the summer. Uh, ice cream is dependent on nice weather, which, which is usually uh, most of in, in the summer. Visitors to a park here probably also has seasonal differences here. Much more people are <laughs> walking in, in the parks in, in summer month. A Christmas present, for example, they uh, are uh, most sell, uh, have, have most sales in uh, in December and maybe also November. So we will have a large growth <coughs> in, in the demand for typical Christmas present in in the end of the year. So. Now we will try to develop new method which also will take the uh, seasonal differences into consideration. So first we will try to have a very simple method with the name in the textbook which is also the simple method uh, also called the quick and dirty method in the, the slides. Uh, this one. So We'll try to show a very small example on uh, a method which can be used when you have very simple uh, seasonal differences. simple example we have actually two seasons we have maybe the winter season and the summer season and actually the terminology in in this book says that uh, uh, well a season is actually uh, one full year one full time period but uh, one, uh, one one full year for example and the periods are the different uh, different periods within the season which might be winter winter period and uh, summer period or uh, if you are using for winter uh, and, uh, and summer and uh, spring and fall, or you can use every month, for example, and, and you can divide into different periods within one full season. So this is actually the terminology that the, the book is, is using. So in this very simple case, we will have two different periods within a season, and you can have historical demand like this and this, and this, and this. So we have demand for two years. And we can clearly see that the period number one will have a higher sales than period <coughs> number two in, in both these years. And now we should use this data to try to find a simple forecast for the two periods in the coming year, the coming uh, system. So here, the first thing, compute the sample mean of the entire data set. Uh, yeah, should be at least several seasons of data. In this small example, we have two seasons, two full seasons. So we have four data, uh, data points, one, two, three, and four. And we have period one in season one, period two in season one, period one in season two, and period two in, in season two. So let's now find the sample mean of these four data points. Then divide each observation by the sample mean, which gives us a factor for each ob observation. How much differ, uh, will this observation differ from the average value? And then try to average the factors for light periods in a season. What is the average between period one 
in the two seasons and the average for period two in the two seasons. Then we have the average factors which can be used to create a simple forecast for the coming years. So let's now see a very small example on this. We have uh, season one and two. <coughs> S1 and S2, and we have period 1 and period 2 within a season. <coughs> um, and we have the measured values for these four data points that the yeah, this example is actually opposite to this one, but uh, it doesn't matter that the, the lowest values are in period one. Uh, so we have 16.2, and for, for period one in season one, period two in season one will be 22.5. And similar in season two, the second year of the data set here will be 17.3. And period two in season two will be 23.5. Then let's try to find first the sample mean of the entire data set, the average D, the average between all these data points, which will be 19.875. And um, then, next step, divide each observation by the sample mean. So we should divide 16.2 by 19.875. So let's call this uh, S1 factor. And similar, the S2 factor and uh, we will find that dividing each of these observation points to the mean the average then we will get 0 0.815 1.3 no 1.32 we will get 0 0.870 and 1.182 dividing these points to the average value and now we have some kind of idea what is the devi deviation for each season uh, from the expected value because we can here assume that the expected value would be the average uh, the average value here over the year independent of seasons, we could expect to sell 19.875 items. But we have some differences here. We have differences in the S1 factor and the S2 factor for both periods, so we need to find the average. So the actual value of the S factor will be the average between these two points which is 0 0.843 and these two points 1.132 and 1.182 will be 1 1.157 so now and we can also see that these two values will sum up to be exactly two we have two periods in each system so now we can make a forecast for the coming period say that the forecast for next year for period number one it will be the expected or the average demand 19.875 multiplied by the S factor season factor for period one you can expect to sell 16.75 items and for period two 
use the same average demand and multiply by the S factor for period number two, 1.1157, and you can expect to sell 23 items. So this was the very simple, called the simple method or the quick and dirty method, when you have different season, in this case, uh, different periods in a season, you have two periods in this case, in, uh, in, in uh, two, two different seasons or two different years, you will find the average factor of the sales in these two years, and then multiply the mean demand, the expected demand, to those factors. To say that in the winter month, you will sell 84.3% of the average demand, and in the summer month, you will sell 115.7% uh, of, uh, of the average. Okay, that was the simple one. Now, I will show another method for trying to identify seasonal <coughs> factor. And this one is called the N period moving average. It is related to the moving average, but it's not uh, actually uh, the same one. Also here, I have created this Word document, which is, uh, which is the <coughs> uh, taken from, from the textbook. So this method is also explained in the textbook, but here, we also have different uh, well, uh, ways of, of uh, uh, when you should make a forecast, a moving average, uh, by this period. First, you should compute the moving average for n periods in the data set. Then you should center it, find the center point for these uh, moving averages. I will go through this in, in an example uh, in, in a short while. Just uh, we do all the points there first. Uh, then obtain values for the first and the last periods in the set by averaging the two nearest values. Because when you center the moving average, you will not, you don't have uh, actual values for the, the first and, and the last uh, uh, periods in, in the series. Then divide the demand to the center, move it in MA for each period to find the ratio, which will be more or less the same as the S factor <coughs> from this example here, will find a ratio which will be uh, in some way a percentage of the expected demand for each period in the season. Then calculate the seasonal factors by averaging the ratios for the, the same season as we also do here, find the average and then adjust the seasonal factors to make the sum exactly equal to the number of season. Here it was exactly two, but sometimes you will have some small deviation here and you need to adjust the seasonal factors to find exactly the, the number, of, uh, the sum, which should be exactly the same as the number of seasons. And then determine the seasonalized demand series by dividing the actual demand to the seasonal factor. And on this de seasonalized series, it is possible to create or use other more uh, sophisticated methods, or for example, trend-based method like the regression and, and, and Holtz method to find trends and 